Hey there, GCW fans. Danny Meltzer here. Before we get into the episode, I am beyond excited to let you guys know that on my channel, I have released my biggest pick fed show ever FAW Winter Slam. This has been a project I've been planning for over a year, and while I might be a little late with the whole winter theme, I can finally share this with all you guys. The card is super stacked with dream matches, classics, surprises, and one main event that you are never going to forget. So yeah, by the time you hear this, it'll already have premiered, but if you like my commentary, go and check out my show and see if my pick fetting skills are up to par as well. With that said, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys on GCW Live. Welcome to another spectacular episode of GCW Live right here on YouTube.com. And we're going to start things off. Oh! Wasn't expecting that. We're going to start things off here with Cody Rhodes taking on Seth Rollins in front of his disciples and in front of the rest of the Bullet Club here tonight. It's going to be the first match of the night. And it's been confirmed at the Royal Rumble, Seth Rollins and his disciples are going to go in a six-man tag team match with any member of the Bullet Club, but we don't know which members are gonna show up. Any thoughts on this, Luke? Well, we've seen uh, Kenny Omega team with the Bucks very successfully in the past, so that would definitely be the combo that I would go with if I was Bullet Club here. And there's Viscera still holding the Intercontinental Championship in that chest. And now the match starts and Cody going immediately after Rollins stunning him. Now Rollins in the ropes and Cody going right after him, sending him into the ropes, but Rollins ducks the strike. Oh, kick right to the midsection and Cody Rhodes is stuck. Here comes Rollins, wait a minute, Cody with the disaster kick. Oh my God, just barely missed. And Seth Rollins was quick enough to hit that super kick right on the jaw and Cody is rocked once again. And now the Messiah taking control of the matchup here, thinking a buckle bump perhaps, getting him up, and now gonna run into the corner. But look at Cody with the Hurricanrana reversal into the ring post. Shoulder first, and Seth Rollins has to be feeling that. He definitely has, as Cody has some time now to recover, as Omega and the Bucks are watching on after the cheap actions of Seth Rollins and his disciples at Armageddon attacking the Bullet Club after the match. Oh my God, we're gonna see it. Cody Rhodes with the toe face to a seat. Wait a second, Viscera catches him in midair. He catched him in midair like a baby and sets him down. How intimidating is that? One of Cody Rhodes' best moves and Viscera just took it and Seth Rollins takes advantage. Now here comes Kenny Omega telling Seth Rollins how unfair it is to have Viscera with the feet trigger right to the bottom of his jaw and Seth Rollins is stunned. Kenny Omega sending a message as Cody Rhodes sends Seth Rollins to Betty Bylan with that disaster kick from the apron. And now Cody getting Seth back into the ring has to follow that up with something and he's going onto the top rope and you know that he's thinking to go for that gigantic moon salt. There it is. And it hits perfectly on the Messiah into the cover. But a kick out at two by the Messiah. Now Cody has to figure out how to follow that up with. And Cody Rhodes, could he be signaling for it? Could he be getting ready for the crossroads here? He's about to hit it. No, the snapmare reversal by Seth Rollins. Going to the... Oh, my God! Taking advantage to hit a cheap shot on Kenny Omega with that super kick. And now Seth Rollins looking to take advantage with the sling blade. No! Cody Rhodes able to counter. Crossroads here. No, there's JTM to stop that maneuver from happening. And Cody Rhodes is a bit more than pissed off here at JTM. As the Bucks check on Kenny on the outside, JTM being told by the ref to get down as Seth Rollins hits the kick to the midsection here. Curb stop, no! Cody Rose rolls out of it! Oh my god, the knee! Look at this Cody Cutter! 
He took out JTN simultaneously as he hit that move. Could it be over here? No, Seth Rollins still finds the strength to kick out again. What does Cody have to do to take down Seth Rollins? Especially in front of his disciples, which I believe give him some kind of outside force to win his matches. Speaking of outside forces, you can just feel the disdain coming off of Viscera's face as he stares holes in Cody Rhodes' body as Seth Rollins is hanging up onto the top. Oh my God, the big boot. And now Seth Rollins here. Oh, try to go for a clothesline there. But Cody Rhodes back suplex. Rollins on his feet, off the ropes. Look at this. Try to go for something here, but Cody Rhodes caught him. Alabama slam, no! Sunset flip, wait a minute. He's not letting go, What's he, what could he be doing? Turnbuckle power bomb, and there's Cody. Once again, down but not out. But how long can I say that for? Oh my God! A cheap shot from Viscera onto Cody, and there's JTM too! Oh my God, wait, was that, was that the V trigger? That was the V trigger, and now Seth Rollins making sure Kenny sees this front and center, but no, look at this, Kenny has had enough. Kenny has had enough, and the bell is, is forced to be rung as Kenny Omega and Seth Rollins are going at it. And now there's Nick Jackson and JTM going at it on the outside, and Matt Jackson doing his best to take down Viscera, but you can only do so much against a monstrous being such as Viscera. And here comes Nick. Oh my God, he gets turned inside out by that clothesline and Viscera staring a hole into the camera and I am scared shitless. What's going on here? Oh God. JTM, he's got the books. They're trapped. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Their legs have to be shattered under all that weight and metal and Seth Rollins is going out. Kenny Omega, he's being held back. Let him go, let him check on his buddies here. Oh God, we gotta get medical attention out here. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think the Bucks can withstand that. I don't think the Bucks are going to be a prominent member in the Bullet Club after this, especially when it comes to the Royal Rumble. What the hell could possibly be next for the Bullet Club here? Oh, look at this, Seth Rollins. Looking over his dirty work. Oh God. What a despicable man Seth Rollins has become. I can't bear to witness. Wait a second, there's AJ Styles! AJ Styles is here to save the day! But wait, he, he's not part of the Bullet Club, is he? Oh my God, he used the corner of that couch. And AJ Styles is here once again to save the day for Bullet Club. The Bullet Club that he was a leader of and then kicked out at WrestleMania 5 by Kenny Omega. And now it seems AJ Styles wants to somehow find his way back into the Bullet Club. Crazy, crazy happenings here on GCW Live. Let's take a trip down memory lane here. Last week, the Hardys and the Brothers of Destruction finally got their hands on each other, and it was absolute chaos and a no-holds-barred match. But it wasn't until Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy were able to trap The Undertaker underneath two coffins and then lay waste to his little brother in the ring to claim victory. I wondered if that was the last time Jeff and The Undertaker were going to cross paths. We now have our answer, ladies and gentlemen. At the Royal Rumble, The Undertaker finally has another chance to take down Jeff Hardy. Will he make him rest in peace or will the dead man just have to stay dead? And I'm so excited for that matchup. But here tonight, now we're getting into our Cruiserweight Championship match. Will Ospreay putting his championship on the line against the new number one contender that we crowned 
last week in Jushin Thunder Liger. And there is the legendary Jushin Thunder Liger. And I gotta tell you, Luke, I can see through his mask right now. He is here on a mission. He means business. He's not playing around here. He's here for victory and he's here for gold. And we're here on the road to WrestleMania. The Royal Rumble is coming close. And how big would it be for Liger to walk into WrestleMania Cruiserweight Champion? We've been waiting on this match ever since Jushin Liger debuted here in GCW. Will Ospreay has been one hell of a champion taking down challenger after challenger, including Ray Phoenix. And Ray Phoenix is no slouch, but he has never faced anyone like Jushin Thunder Liger. I definitely agree with you on that. You know, they faced off once in the lockdown cage match, but there were three other competitors in the match. So tonight, a very different dynamic. And here comes the champion himself, the aerial assassin, Will Ospreay. Arguably the king of the cruiserweight division here in GCW. He's taken down so many challengers. Can he do the same to Jushin Liger here tonight? We'll have to find out when this dream match ensues. I cannot wait here, Luke. And now let's take a look back again how Liger punched his ticket for his opportunity here tonight, pinning Ray Fenix in a fatal four-way match. Some may have called that a fluke, just an accident, just Jushin Liger being lucky, but that was a cold calculated mark in Jushin Liger's history in order to get him in a ring face-to-face -face with Will Ospreay. And now it's here. Cruiserweight division title on the line here. Jushin Liger versus the aerial assassin Will Ospreay. Everyone's on the edge of their seat. The tension is rising and the stakes could not be higher for Jushin Liger or Will Ospreay. And the bell rings and here we go. Liger immediately having Ospreay in a headlock. Now Ospreay pulling him up and Liger Nicely rolling through, and now Liger going for a punch straight into the face. And that hit perfectly, and that stunned the Cruiserweight Champion here in the corner. Now Liger sending him off into the rope, shooting him off. But oh my god, Osprey lands on his feet. Look how quick he is. What a kick to the head of Liger. And now the crowd all fired up just from the beginning seconds of this matchup. And what's Will Ospreay thinking of? Springboard attempt here. He's got it. Trying to get a clothesline going there, but the dragon suplex, no! Look at this. Ospreay knows just how to counter all of this stuff. Super kick, no. Ducked by Liger with the wheel kick right to the top of the head. And turnabout is fair play. And Ospreay also landed hard there on the outside. Could hear that thud going through the arena. And now what is Jushin Liger thinking? Osprey now went over here to the other side. And now I think Liger is looking for that cannonball off the apron, but Osprey! Oh my God, that power bomb onto the exposed concrete floor. Jushin Liger is down and the referee is forced to check on the legend. And I just hope that he did not hit his head on the floor. That could be, could be fatal here for Liger in this matchup. Someone has to check on Liger here. Do, do we need medical? But Will Ospreay's not taking any chances as he hits the super kick right to the jaw of Liger. And now Ospreay's just playing with his food here. Honestly, I think he should just go for the damn cover. Now look at this, what's Osprey thinking? But Liger quick on his feet as he intercepts the champion from the top. Cuts him down to size and Liger has the chance to gain his bearings here. And now what's this? Liger, oh God, we all know what happens here. Something risky, high risk maneuver by Liger. What could he be thinking of doing superplex? No, Avalanche Brain Buster right on the top of Will Osprey's head. Go for the cover. But no, I think he's still feeling the effects of that power bomb to the outside. 
Jeez, uh, you can see he's catering the back here, but Osprey might be a bit in more trouble as Liger is getting ready to hit the Liger bomb, but look at Osprey able to power out. And Liger again landing on the back there. Now Osprey ducks Galarian going for the Oscar, oh my God, Liger with the Lariat. On the other way around, now Dragon Suplex into the cover. Bridge, kick out by Osprey. Osprey able to get the shoulder up, and it is far from over here, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd watching in anticipation as Liger tries everything he can to take down. Oh my God! And again, the back of Liger smashed against the apron on the way down. And now what is Will Ospreay thinking? Liger might be in perfect position for the Sasuke special! And oh my god, it hits right on target! This is why Will Ospreay is the Cruiserweight Champion here in GCW. Just brilliant! Now... Once again, looking for the springboard drop kick right to the back of Jushin Liger. Once again, targeting the exposed portion of his body. And now Osprey looking for the Os cutter. Can it go through? Liger big air into the Liger bomb. And Osprey bounces off the mat. This has to be it. No kick out and two by Osprey. He's still in it. And Liger is shocked. Ladies and gentlemen, and now he has to follow this up somehow. Another Liger bomb here tonight. He lands it, and Osprey is now worse for wait, wait a second, Osprey! Oh my god! Hidden blade right to the face of Liger. How incredible is this? Both of these men are not letting up at all. And you could clearly see that Osprey knew he was out, so he had to hit one more maneuver uh, coming out of all of the momentum of being dropped there and took Liger out on the way which could have saved him the match here to be honest. Both of these men trying to get back to their feet. Oh my God and it's Liger who gets the super kick right to the face once again and now Osprey hoisting Liger up looking to drop him here but Liger able to weasel his way out of it. Oh my god! Osprey sent crashing to the ref, kick to the gut. What's this? Liger bomb once again. No, wait a second. Osprey reverse Rana! Right to the top of the. Wait, who the hell is that? Destroyer! What the hell? Uh, Luke, am I high or are there two Jushin Ligers in the GCW ring? And now, he seems to be running away into the night as Osprey is down and the ref is now coming to again. Liger taking advantage, but a third Liger bomb. One, two, we have a new champion. What the hell just happened? This cannot be the way this ends. This is, this is ridiculous. Did Liger know? about his quote-unquote imposter? Or was that an accomplice? If you ask me, this looked planned. You have seen how Liger pushed Osprey into the referee. And then once the referee is down, this other Liger comes running in and helps Jushin Thunder Liger to victory. I just have one question here. Who is underneath that other costume helping Jushin Thunder Liger you tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for our main event of the evening. The Extreme Style Championship will be put on the line between four of the most high-flying, tooth-spitting, bloodthirsty individuals I have ever seen in this business. And the first one to make his presence known is the Prince Finn Balor. 
And if I'm not mistaken, we have not seen him for a while here in GCW. That is indeed the case. Last time we've seen Balor was at GCW Lockdown, where he teamed up with Keith Lee and John Moxley to fight Seth Rollins and his disciples. And here comes John Morrison. He had such a great showing back last week in that fatal four-way number one contendership for the Cruiserweight Championship. He came up short there, but can he redeem himself and gain some new gold? We'll have to see and find out as he enters the ramp and the ring. I think it's a great move by Morrison to move on from the Cruiserweight division into this hardcore division here, especially with his parkour background. This will be very helpful for him. And now we witness one of my favorites, my absolute favorites in this business, Pentagon Jr. He goes by many names, Pentagon Jr., Peta El Cero Miedo, Pentagon Dark. But tonight, he's hoping to call himself new Extreme Style Champion. And this tonight is his debut here in GCW. Vince McMahon did sign him now that he brought the Extreme Division back to GCW Live. Now you can hear it in the crowd. This is a crowd favorite, John Moxley, making his way into the ring with blinded colors. Any one of these men could be top contenders for this championship, but only one can prevail here tonight. And now the bell has been rung, and this is on as Finn Balor goes right after John Moxley showing no remorse with those elbows. And it looks like Pentagon and Morrison aren't wasting any time setting up those tables. And now hanging up. Oh no, super kick sends John Morrison crashing down to the concrete floor and Pentagon is admiring his work here in front of all these people in attendance. And now John Moxley sends Finn Balor to pick on Halo through the table and Pentagon Jr. goes crashing down and burning. Unbelievable as Finn Balor rises from the ashes as Pentagon Jr. felt all of that. And now Moxley in the ring bringing in a ladder. A gigantic one at that. But there's Morrison back on the apron with a gigantic kick. And he sends Moxley flying back first onto that ladder. And now Balor back in the ring as well. Now going for the bloody Sunday, but Morrison reverses now perhaps on the ladder. Oh, but look at the strength of Morrison, lifting him up, and now looking to dump him over the top onto the table as Finn Balor is hanging vicariously over that rope. But now look at Pentagon. I think he's watched payback with that super kick. And now look at this Pentagon with the power bomb through the table. Turnabout is indeed fair play. And the action just doesn't stop here as Moxley is going for the paradigm shift. Morrison counters, going for the Enzo Giri kick. No, Moxley ducks. And a German suplex onto the ladder, folding John Morrison. And now Pentagon is back in the ring. What is he going? Going for that Fisherman driver onto the ladder. Folds Moxley, and Moxley goes right to the outside after that one. And now Pentagon perhaps thinking package pile driver Morrison able to avoid it going for the spring, but Angel Geary, but oh! Pentagon sends him crashing hard to the outside here, ladies and gentlemen. And now is he thinking to go for that Destroyer from the ring apron, but there's Ballard. Oh my god, that foot stomp into the back of Pentagon, and he takes out Morrison on the way down. And oh my god, the infamous barbed wire chair introduced by Finn Balor as he's looking to kill John Morrison. Oh my God, did you just see that? Did you see the agility as John Morrison kicks the barbed wire chair into the face of the Prince and he is now bleeding crimson.
And here comes Pentagon with the elbow, looking to pick up the scraps and take care of John Morrison as he props him up against the corner of that apron. And now look at this. Wait a minute, John Moxley, Tope Suicida takes down Pentagon Jr. And now Finn Balor with the slate blade, head first onto the concrete ground. And that is taking out Moxley there, but Morrison now sending Balor right into the ring. And now what does Morrison have in mind here? Going for a springboard, another springboard moonsault onto Balor. Perfectly done by Morrison. And now he's going here after the ladder. It seems like he's setting up a ladder bridge here. Yes, it is a ladder bridge. Finn Balor gets up and hits the Pele kick right to the top of the head of John Morrison. And he tumbles to the outside, hanging onto that set up ladder. Oh, the crowd, they're sensing something. And Finn Balor, he knows it too. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, no. Don't tell me he's about to do this. This is going to be catastrophic if Finn Balor lands this on John Morrison through that ladder. Is he going to do it? Oh, no. Look at Pentagon looking to foil Finn Balor's plans. But. Oh, he's paying no mind to Finn Balor as he goes right towards John Morrison. And he's going to do puta madre. Did I just see that shit? The Destroyer threw our announce table. I almost got crossed. I almost got caught in the crossfire. My life just flashed before my eyes as John Moxley is now in the ring. Is that a glass pane? Oh my God, kick to the gut. No way, don't tell me. Don't tell me this is going to happen. Don't tell me I'm gonna see this! John Moxley! Oh my god! And now Pentagon trying to gain some kind of offense here as he gets the X-Plex onto the ladder. There goes Pentagon, and Moxley is going for the cover. Can he gain the victory here? We have a new Extreme Style Champion, and his name is Moxley. And I think Vince McMahon has gotten exactly what he wanted here with the Extreme Division on GCW Live. We definitely have seen some blood and guts here tonight. Wait, wait, wait a second. What's going on here? That's the GCW check. Oh my God, is that Chris Jericho? We haven't seen Chris Jericho since Brock Lesnar busted his head open with those elbows. And now Paul Heyman is out here trying to check on the champion, but Chris Jericho, the alpha, is back. And he's staring down the beast with that cold, hard baseball bat. Oh my God, oh! I guess he's just chickening him out. Oh, the Judas effect right to the jaw as Brock Lesnar goes tumbling down the ramp. What a statement made by Chris Jericho. He could have easily finished Lesnar off there, but I think Jericho has something in mind for Lesnar. Maybe even come the Royal Rumble. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on GCW Live. New champions, new returns, new surprises, and we're not even at the Royal Rumble yet. Be there live as we go off the air. I have been Danny Meltzer. This is Luke. We bid you good night.